Jeff, thanks for joining me in the studio today. I want to learn more about Full Contact and what exactly does Full Contact do? Thanks for having me, Daniel. So Full Contact is a privacy safe identity resolution company. For over 10 years, we've been helping our customers build trusted relationships with their customers. And the way that you do that is by better understanding your customers. So by better targeting your products to them, to understand campaign measurement, to better personalize to them, to better understand how customers, when they browse your website, what's of interest to them, and again, show them the right information to make a purchase. So tell me more about what exactly is identity resolution, if you had to define that term. There's a lot of folks that wonder what identity resolution is. So there's a lot of talk in the market about, well, identity resolution is as simple as matching an email address or matching phone numbers together, and you're able to take your customer database and consolidate it. But identity resolution at its core is understanding your customers and the way that everyone interacts with a brand so as a consumer interacts with a brand over time, they give you parts and pieces about themselves. We all do it. Like I may give a fake email address when I'm going to sign up for a newsletter because I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to get. Or you know, over time, naturally, I'm going to move. All these parts and pieces that we expose to an organization change and are constantly moving. So our service allows organizations to tie those disparate fragments together pseudonymous IDs, phone numbers, email addresses, tie it into one golden record of the customer. So that's pretty impressive. So that type of solution means you are gathering and ingesting just an immense amount of disparate data yeah, from absolutely. all sorts of sources. Tell me about some of those sources. What, what's an example of a few? Yeah, so we, we've got a number of different sources that go into our identity graph. That's at the core of the application we have we are powering with Snowflake. So we have billions of identifiers, terabytes of data that we're linking together. There's sources that we have gathered that are proprietary. We bring in trusted relationships and sources to bring all this data together and make it very, very easy for an organization that uses Snowflake to interact with it. We do all the heavy lift and just provide simple functions to interact with that within Snowflake. Beautiful. So a solution like that needs a platform that can handle that amount of Absolutely. data. So tell me, how does Snowflake fit into this product and solution that you've built? You know, identity resolution is a core service that's in the background for any organization that's looking to market to their customers. And there's a number of customers in the market today that obviously see Snowflake as a data cloud, the data layer. So how can they operationalize the data that they have within Snowflake to better market to their customers? So we felt like having identity resolution as a service that could be turned on, turnkey, could just be automated and running in the background as the business is understanding their customers uh, was something that made a lot of sense. Uh, so that's one of the core reasons that we built what we built uh, in Snowflake today. That's fantastic. So tell me more about, you, you, so you've built a Snowflake native application. Yep. yep. Tell me about your journey in, in creating the native app and more specifically, why native applications on Snowflake? Yeah, so there's, Snowflake is a tremendous platform. If you are a developer looking to integrate in different ways, all of us as partners have different areas that we could be investing and where we could build our technology. Uh, Snowflake obviously has different ways where you can build a connected app, you could build a native application. There's a myriad of ways to integrate into the ecosystem. We felt like the native application really made sense for us because of the challenges inherent with handling customer data. It's very hard to be a nimble organization and go to market when you're talking about the old methods of taking customer data, transferring them outside of a platform to a third party. There's a lot of security risk. There's a lot of legal oversight that needs to happen. So by building something native in Snowflake where there's no data movement and alleviate all of those concerns around handling customer information really matches up for our customer profile, for your customer profile, for speed to market, to be able to take that consumer information and better build trusted relationships. That's amazing. And I mean, not to mention with Snowflake native apps, it's one click install. Yes. Right. So that reachability that you get with native apps, the ease of use with them makes a big difference. 
So tell me more about the architectural overview. Like how does the data flow from your platform through Snowflake? And ultimately, how does the customer get to use that? How is it exposed? This is a great illustration of how we fit into a very simplified flow and how customers typically are going to be interacting with a data cloud like Snowflake. We sit in a couple of different areas within these different flows. So data needs to get into the data cloud through ingestion. A lot of different processes happen in terms of transformation of that data to get it ready for the business to either get analytical insights or some sort of intelligence. And then for some businesses who are then operationalizing that data, especially in a marketing use case, they are activating it through some other tool. So it might sit in their stack where they might have a solution like a high touch or like a growth loop or something else to take that data back out prepared to activate in marketing channels. So we sit at the forefront initially of event collection as well as a core part of what we do is in the transformation area. So on the event collection side, we have a JavaScript component where a customer typically will implement this on their website. It's within their consent practices and their consent management platform. And once they have that consent, we can assign what we call a person ID, which is a unique ID to that customer. The organization can then understand when a customer is browsing a website, my existing customer, can we tie that to our existing information, in our CRM? So that's on the front end. We also sit very much in the core of the data cloud. So identity resolution, our resolve product, takes all customer profiles and ties them together, the parts and pieces. And then we have a data enrichment piece as well. So we have some of that technology native and some of that technology that we call out using UDFs. So we really cover a broad scope of components here that a, a customer typically needs to go and source from multiple providers by getting the initial recognition of a customer, resolving it, and then enriching or appending data to that. And we use a, a wide range of technologies here for uh, your particular audience. You know, zero copy sharing is a key component of the event logs that we bring in with customer recognition. And then, like I mentioned, UDFs are, uh, around our enrichment are also another key component, as well as just how we store our data and optimize the queries on very large data sets that can be tens of millions of records. So I love how clear this diagram really, it really amplifies how the data flows, where Snowflake fits into this solution. Uh, from here, let's see a demo. Yeah, absolutely, that'd be great. So wanna really show what the install process looks like and it's really simple from the marketplace. So we're gonna first pull up the marketplace and take a look at our listings. So we're gonna search for full contact. We have our main core application here. Customers can try out for free for 14 days to get a sense for how the application works and better get a sense if, they don't, if they're new to identity resolution, how they would design a pilot successfully for them. So it, it's just really a one-click install, right? You, you click get, you choose a warehouse, you name your application, and then it installs. Uh, from a consumer side, that's very simple. From a provider side, very compelling from a management and overhead perspective because in the background, uh, this application is copying over our logic, copying over terabytes of data and replicating it over to a different cloud region that matches what the customer has. And when we as a provider are providing our app to customers across North America, that is a huge value add in terms of overhead and management of that process to make sure customers can get onboarded quickly. So I, I love this. One of the big announcements that we made at Summit regarding native apps was the ability to have custom billing events. Can you talk to me a little bit about, you know, what, how do you, uh, do you leverage custom billing events today? And, and if so, how do you leverage those? I'm going to be honest with you. We, so we tracked right along on your different options for monetization, custom billing events, I think, may have come out of our own individual feedback. Yeah. So I think we have plans in the future at looking at that for sure. Um, but I, I think we're gonna show some interesting things here that will uh, convey the range of options a provider has to monetize their apps that are both what uh, you provide in platform, which are very flexible, as well as options that can be provided in a combination outside the platform with, uh, as well as inside. 
So we've got the application installed. So from here, a customer is going to go through and do some additional configuration steps. Snowflake is very awesome in what they built in Streamlit and recently released a SDK in Python to be able to have a very bespoke user flow on how to set up the right permissions and objects within Snowflake to be able to use an app. And it also provides that governance to the user so they can go back and reflect on what permission have I given this app to do on my data at any point in time. So that's a really important consideration for uh, any organization. So we're going to request that a customer sets up an API integration and some external functions. When I talked about the monetization, these things tracked usage for us in our backend system. So those are required to use the app. We also have to give access to the app to be able to uh, use both the API integration as well as grant what's a app specific role to your existing roles. Uh, so that's another step. And then the final step, we do require a full contact API key. Uh, so uh, it's a really quick setup on our platform at platform.fullcontact.com. And you're going to put in your API key. And after that, you're pretty much ready to go. So you can see there that that setup uh, reasonably takes less than five minutes. It can take as short as one or two minutes. That's impressive. That's awesome. So it's very quick to install the app, as you can see. Once the app is installed, you're going to come into the Streamlit UI that we built to help guide you through what you need to do to set up the app. The developer, anytime, if they want to see more under the hood, they can click through these different steps here on the left, and they can do the manual creation. So we provide the SQL here for them to be able to do that on their own if they feel more comfort that way. But we've gone through this process. You can see that it's less than a minute or two to really get it set up and get working. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show a little bit about how the app works in a applied customer story. I feel like stories help us understand things in a more simple way. And identity resolution, even with my explanation earlier, can be a little bit abstract for people. So we're going to be looking at a fictional customer, a fictional organization called Urban Roots. So Urban Roots sells hydroponic equipment to home consumers. Uh, they consumers that like to grow their own fresh produce uh, in a sustainable way, okay? So they have uh, different data about their customers from their in-store and their online presence. And each of those sets of data are gonna contain potentially disparate pieces about a customer that may or may not be up to date with that particular customer. So as we're gonna pull up an example table here, our customer lifetime spend, you're going to see a, a sample customer called Will Underwood. You know, and, and the marketing would have a sense when they're building their audiences and their segmentation at scale that they may not have the total addressable audience that they need. And this is a, an example of how Willow James, before she was married, then ultimately took the name Will, Will Underwood. Um, she spent a certain amount of money in store purchasing products when she was in a large metropolitan area. But after she was married, she moved and she was no longer close to a store. She started to have to order products online. And so she's got multiple profiles here where she's made purchases over time. The marketing team is trying with a campaign to launch a new hydroponic product. It's an AI hydroponic product. So it's got more advanced sensors. It's got some software component to set the system kind of on autopilot. And they feel like a customer that's already invested heavily in purchasing accessories and setup is going to be interested in this product. So their marketing team is roughly targeting someone that's got a, a lifetime spend of over $1,000, close to $2,000 as part of their segmentation. And granted, that's an oversimplified segmentation, but for the purposes of the demo. So what we need to do with Willow's information is we need to understand with high certainty that this Willow is the same Willow. Willow is a unique name, but imagine John Smith, where you can't be confident that that is one single individual. So we're going to take this table and run it through our Resolve application. So the Resolve call is really simple. All you need is a table as an input, and then you're going to get the Resolve outputs afterwards. 
Your resolved output table is going to contain an appended person ID. That's at a individual person level, a unique identifier that allows you to key different data sets together. If your data isn't ready in a, a form for application to accept, we also have a helper function there that'll help you create a view that can be used as input. So the resolve function is gonna run for a, a short amount of time. And just keep in mind here that we're running against billions of fragments of data. Part of the value that we provide to customers is that we provide the linkages, we provide all the overhead in maintaining these different structures as data changes over time from consumers. And we provide this to customers in a, in a way that it's a simple function to call. And that's the scope of it. Our app in a way looks overly simplified in how you use it, but that's part of the value is that all the heavy lifting is done in the back end, and what we've put together is powered by Snowflake in our app for a customer experience to be really simple. So you can see now that we've resolved our data. Now we can get back to better understanding Willow's profile. So we've assigned, you can see that our resolve function has assigned the same person ID to Willow on each of her records. So now marketing can go back, aggregate those records together and get a more concrete view of the lifetime value of Willow, which you see here is actually closer to $1,700 in her in-store and online purchases. So that's really compelling. So the marketing team is looking to launch this product. They're not looking to just target existing customers, but they also want to try to engage and get customers that haven't purchased to make that initial purchase. And they feel like an AI enhanced product is really a compelling offer. So they also want to target from their different data sets, customers that have been browsing their website, again, existing customers in terms of someone who has signed up for a newsletter, but hasn't yet made a purchase. So we want to understand someone that has been browsing high-end hydroponic kits on the website maybe they'd be interested in this new product, this new AI hydroponic product. So what we're gonna do is we've already resolved in the interest of time, we've already resolved this set of newsletter data from a customer who signed up for, for email information. And we've also got a table here that tracks our web events from the website. And in these web events, we've appended a person ID and it contains log data about where a customer has browsed, actions that have been taken on the website, like a product view or an add to cart or viewing a, a particular part of a product description. So we're able to then cross-reference between your known customers and your newsletter subscription database and the log events from the website and understand, well, these are the customers that are interested in home kits. We can now market to them. Um, so what we're showing here on the screen is that intersection. That's kind of the power of Resolve itself. So what do you do with Resolve after you've appended these ideas? You, you need to take some action on the customer. That's where data enrichment can play a role. So we also have a, a native set of capabilities to do what we call media amplification. So that's taking a customer's profile and doing appends to add hashed email addresses and mobile ad IDs, typically to do customer acquisition, social media paid channels. So a user can then take these resolved customer records, run them through our media amplification, and they will get back those appended results that they can then take uh, again and activate them outside of Snowflake. So that function is run and we've appended the results to it. So we'll pull those up to just give you for what that looks like. So for each record, we've got that original person ID, and now we've got a couple of additional columns appended here that are gonna be your hashed emails and your mobile ad IDs. And we provide some metadata there to help you make better decisions about, we have certain amount of observances of these pieces of data over time. That's part of the value we provide is that lineage with our identity graph. So you can make a decision on maybe you want to spend more money on email addresses that have more of a freshness to them than not, uh, and same with the mobile ad IDs. So yeah, this is a, an amazing demo. So tell me more about, you know, as a, as a data engineer um, utilizing your native app, what are all the different ways that they get access to that app? I saw, you know, you have a Streamlit yep. application as part of it. Yep. Um, are there other functionalities that they get access to with your native app? 
Yep, so there's a couple of different functionalities. So we talked in the beginning about shares play a role. So with our customer recognition solution, they're gonna have a share that displays in their account. If they're interacting with our Resolve application, we've got a number of stored procedures that are our core stored procedures, or there's some things to help them format their data in a way to better interact. And then they have, uh, like I mentioned, UDFs. And all those components there, the, the customer has as much access as they want that makes sense that balances the provider's IP and what we give them. So like in the setup step, we didn't show, but if a data engineer really wants to see what they're setting up at a more granular level, wants to have hands-on, we provide them the SQL there to be able to do that themselves and just feel more of a sense of ownership. Fantastic. So. Tell me more about, you know, from this demo, you touched on why native apps and, you know, some of the features of Snowflake. Yep. Tell me, dive a little deeper on why did you ultimately choose Snowflake from the beginning to build this, this entire platform on? So, I mean, there's a, a number of considerations that go into when you make a heavy investment into a partner, certainly traction and market, the makeup of the partner and the maturity of them. I think in particular, though, one of the aspects we looked at was the maturity of the marketplace. So when you look at any SaaS technology in ways that you as a provider can integrate into it, typically it it's, can be kind of contained. It can be specific hooks into the tool and specific contained experiences that will, will fit a limited set of use cases, and it's very controlled. Snowflake, it, it's, it's kind of like a wide open book in the way that you can integrate. And we touched on the importance of being able to have the mechanisms to install, test, and then deploy, and then for the provider to be able to just have a turnkey way to monetize the platform. We didn't really get into the detail about the monetization, but you can invoice on a monthly basis, you can invoice on a row basis, there's custom billing, or if you configure and set that up, that's just going in the background. That's very compelling as it relates to acquiring new customers at scale and having them test out your platform and potentially have uh, you know, a really simple way to get those new customers. So over the next you know, six, 12 months from now, what should your customers get most excited about? We've always been uh, on the forefront of adopting new features that Snowflake has released. It feels like we're a like-mind hive in that way. So I, I expect that we're going to be looking at adopting some of the, the things related to apps, say with Streamlit, some probably more advanced reporting to get some insights into customers. We're definitely excited about the announcements that came out at Summit around you know, your partnership with NVIDIA, how you see the future for a series of apps that a customer may use that may be powered by AI. There's some really compelling things there for us when you're handling customer data and you're talking to a marketer around how do I better understand, how I better segment, how do I better build audiences to be able to do all of that in the data cloud without having the worry about data residency and taking my proprietary strategic data and moving it somewhere else in order to do that. So I think we're starting to uh, uh, at least continue those conversations based on what was announced at Summit. You know, I, I love that you mentioned some of those Summit announcements, yep. especially NVIDIA partnership bringing GPUs directly inside of Snowflake. You even mentioned the residency, you know, obstacle and challenge that a lot of companies have. and. The Snowpark Container Services is, is, a, is one of the best ways that really brings that anything compute directly inside of Snowflake. And when you combine that with GPUs, when you combine that with the ease of install mm -hmm. and development of native apps, mm -hmm. it's a game changer. So tell me more about some of the generative AI use cases that you mentioned you know, that, you, that you're exploring. What's, what are some common use cases? It really seems like a identity resolution platform could benefit from machine learning and AI. Um, tell me more about that. You know, again, this is very forward-looking, and uh, you know, if you just talk in general about the market and what generative AI can do, typically an interaction uh, with your customer data is going to start with some knowledge about what you have, and a lot of times that's the problem that a marketer has: is they have a sense, they can get a, a sample of data, and know that something's not quite right. So there's a lot of opportunities there with generative AI where you could have a conversation to better understand what you can or can't do uh, with the data that you have, or maybe where the gaps that you have where you could 
augment that with data enrichment, or you could do hygiene operations or something in that nature. That makes total sense. Yep. So, Jeff, where should people go to learn more about Full Contact? Yeah, so they can go to fullcontact.com. You can go to our Snowflake page and learn more about the products that we offer. If you're interested in the 14-day free trial that I mentioned in the beginning, just go to fullcontact.com forward slash snow, and that will bring you to the offer and registration page there. And you can completely try out this app and, and come talk to us, certainly, because there's components here. If you're interested in customer recognition, which is very powerful if you're looking at doing affinities and interest-based data with your known customers, there's a component there that we have to help set up. It can't be completely turnkey because it is a, a JavaScript and a consent piece that you have to install on your website. Makes sense. Jeff, thanks for joining me here today in the studio. It's been great learning all about how Full Contact is powered by Snowflake. Hey, thanks for having us. It's been great. And folks, if you want to learn more about how to build your next application on Snowflake, check out developers.snowflake.com. And if you want to see other interviews like this one with technical leaders in the space, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. My name is Daniel Myers, and this has been another episode of Powered by Snowflake. Thank <laughs> you.